I'd like to welcome the Honorable Hans Eichel, um, a German politician and the co-founder of G20. As of July 2015, he is Germany's second uh, longest serving Minister of Finance after World War II reconstruction. Eichel was chairman of the G7 in 1992, uh, 1999 and chairman of the G20 in 2004. Before that, Eichel served at eight years as Premier of Hesse home to Frankfurt and the European Central Bank and Germany's wealth of state per capita with an econo economy larger than Finland, Vietnam and Pakistan. During his time in office, Eichel played a very important role um, in two landmark reforms, the far-reaching reform of German society and economy, um, also known as Agenda 2010, and the creation of the G20 to reflect the rebalancing of power, of world power. And I'd like to ask you, um, you were talking about multilateralism and you were referring to common interests. Do you think that cultural diplomacy can be to, a tool to create more common interests between nations and hence support multilateral cooperation? I think it is possible if we accept that um, to live together in the world is not only a question of economy, it's a cultural question. On one side, we have very, uh, 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 we have uh, different cultures and quite a lot of, of different cultures all over the world. We must accept there are differences. But on the other side, um, to combine uh, cultures means to create in, uh, innovation. There is no innovation if there is not a, um, a cooperation between different cultures. And uh, to cooperate between different cultures mean, means to take only to uh, take uh, peaceful means and instruments. Uh, and uh, therefore, I think, yes, cultural diplomacy can play an important role to come to a more peaceful world. Very interesting. Um, just a short one. You were talking about um, the United N uh, Nations and that a new structure is needed, but that the African countries or Latin America need uh, more cooperation within these continents to be able then to ask the United Nations. Do you think that the United Nations, the existing members of the um, Security Council, will then accept that and will be willing to change? N uh, not really, but uh, I think if uh, Africa is really united or has a very strong framework of cooperation, then they, the other uh, or the members of the Security Council can't refuse to reform the United Nations and can't refuse to accept an American uh, seat, an African seat in the Security Council. And the same to Latin America, the same to uh, Southeast Asia and so on. Because um, now the representation within Security Council does not reflect the situation as in the world we have now. Mm -hmm. It reflects the situation in the world after the Second World War. And uh, to change it, it's not a question whether the five uh, permanent member states of uh, Security Council will accept it or not. It's a question whether the others who are underrepresented uh, are really asking by a strong voice. And this is what they must do. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for your time. Okay.